This channel brought to you by patrons. Thank you to my patrons and subscribers and subscribers for being there to support the channel. And now on to the video. I'm Zeos Pantera. This is a kitty cat mouse pad. That's Wiz from Kanasuba. And this is the most popular amplifier on Amazon right now. And I've had it for two months. I did that video talking about the power supply and the Fosse V3. Um, so I'm way late to the party. According to Amazon, and this is a new feature of Amazon, they show you how many of a thing has been sold. 700 in the last month. 700 people bought the Fosse V3. You know what? They're not powering headphones with it, unless you are. Please tell me in the comments if you are. I'm going to start here. We're going to move to the speaker testing arena. I just have to get this out of the way because I brought to the left. This is the this is sort of like the archive of, and I can't, please tell me if I've missed any. These are the speaker amps that I've been using to power headphones now for the last, Jesus, the Emotiva, the original A100, was using my old apartment. She looked like 2016, 2017. The 50 watt per channel speaker amp, which when you put an 8 ohm load is 50 watts, when you put a 50 ohm load, it's 8 watts. That was in un insurmountable numbers for a headphone amp back in the Dizay. So when Argons came out, T60 Argons or something, they needed so much power that a speaker amp was the only option. Now, fast forward to now, and I've got the, this is the, the D70 Pro, I got the A70, which is a headphone amp. Only a headphone amp, and it has 17 watts of channel, specifically out of a headphone amp. So we've come to sort of catch up about this thing called headroom. Headroom is very important. It's like, does your thing need 100% of the amplifier to run it? If so, that's bad. You have no headroom. You need like 50%, at least, where it's like, you know what? The volume control's here and everything sounds fine. I can go so much farther. And that isn't just the way it works with the volume control. There's also a capacitors and how much power is on reserve based on the circuitry, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada. So this amplifier that we're talking about today from Fosse Audio is currently $89. I may have a coupon. I don't know. They sent it to me a couple months ago, and I'm not sure if it's still active, but I'll link it in the description. You tell me if it works. And on paper... This can run a four ohm load because it's a speaker amp. So two four ohm loads left and right, individually 300 watts. <laughs> to put that in perspective, the Emotiva here is 50 watts into eight ohms and it couldn't do four ohms at all. The topping LA, LA90 discrete, um, I believe on a four ohm load can do like 100 watts channel, maybe 80. And this is a $800 amplifier. And just for fun, I have the IAMA T9 here, which is a little tube preamp amp, and that thing's 100 watts per channel. And it's great. Now, you may recall, um, I also did the IAMA, uh, what was it, the A A3, which uses the same Texas Instrument chip that this does. And I even said you could use it for headphones. And I still say that now, the only difference is the Fosse here is so much nicer built. Like, the Ayama stuff is great, and the cheapest at $60, because it's using the same chip. But the Fosse, they offer a 48-volt power supply, which was the whole reason that that son of a bitch down there is running it right now at 48 volts. And I want to bring up one other thing while we're here at this desk before we move over there. Did you know this exists? Everyone's talking V3. No one's talking uh, BT20A Pro. You see, Fosse sent me both of these. And this one is straight raw dog, RCA inputs, power outputs, go home, you're drunk. This is the exact same thing as that internally. 300 watts per channel into 4 ohms, which usably 8 ohms, you figure half that. So when without distortion, you figure less than that. Even if it's 80 watts per channel, clean is insane for speakers. We're running very low, low loads here. So like I have the, the new Mod House tungstens, which aren't out yet. Don't could ask, but don't ask, which require extremely high voltage to push. I've got the Abyss Dianas, which are $4,500. And I've got the Moondrop Venus. These are all big planars. And big planars need big power. And while I can hunt it down with other amplifiers, this just says, ah, eh, fuck it, and just runs them. 
And the thing is, it's clean. I've got a set of IEMs here. I'm getting off the topic, but that's just how my brain works. These are my Dunu Zen Pros. These are $900, where they were, these are 700 now. Single dynamic, very sensitive. I call them my stethoscope to the audio world. And I plugged these into both of these amplifiers, and there is a hiss. The V3 has a very subtle shh. Keeping in mind, I just plugged the most sensitive set of IEMs I have into a 300 watt per channel speaker amp, and I got a gentle shh. Which means any load greater than this, you're not gonna hear at all. The BT20, however, because it has more complicated things going on, not just Bluetooth, but bass and treble adjustments, which I'm not sure if they're in the digital realm or the analog realm. I honestly don't know. This is only like $10 more than that, by the way, for the same power and more features, but noise floor is greater and there's a constant of the Bluetooth trying to reach out and touch somebody. Even if it's off, it's reaching out and you can hear it. So not quite as clean. The V3 gets its props for a very simple reason. It's insane. We, we get two knobs, which I, it wasn't even like, why are they giving me two knobs? You can get a, you get a copper knob or a black knob and you take it and it's not a normal black knob like it. This is a machined aluminum, complete lightweight, like, okay, that's fucking wild. You get two of those anodized bronze on this one. I'm using these CSS, C-E-S-S -S cables, by the way, which I twisted together to make them look sexy as hell. Um, the back of the unit, power supply. So normally comes with the uh, 32 volt five amp. That's fine. We can talk about it. It can't pull its full power load with that because it can handle, the actual chip can handle up to 56 or 52 volts, but um, according to the specs on the Texas Instrument uh, website. But we're running it currently off that power supply, which is 48 volt, five amp, matching the one that's available. I'll link in the description, hi, Wiz. It's 50 bucks. You spend 89 on this, you spend another 50. You've now into this thing for $139 but you get the full unlocked power. I just would rather use my big power supply anyway. Uh, I built this adapter, if you wanna go check that out in the second channel so I can run, it's actually a four pin XLR, but I have a 4.4 Pentacon adapter on that. So I'm running that out of it. And this here is interesting because there's a labeled pre-out. That's a 3.5 millimeter, but it's not a pre-out. It's actually just a signal pass through. Because a pre-out means the volume control should adjust what's coming out of it like a preamp. But what it's actually doing is anything that comes into the RCA is getting converted. In fact, you could turn this unit completely off, which I just did, because that's the on that's the only front thing is a blue light. And it goes click and it's on. And when you turn it off, the blue light stays for a minute while it's losing capacitance. I have that 3.5 millimeter going out and feeding into the BT20A, which has a red light. Uh, I said to kept connecting to my phone. I had to shut off my phone's Bluetooth because I had adjusted it before. And that will turn blue or red. This has an actual physical power switch. And then you have the knobs, which are dedicated volume at bass and treble. And I could say this much, no matter, even if this has a little bit more noise floor and I could tell with the IMs, when you're running God's most incredible headphones, you really can't tell. Um, so I'm imagining with speakers, it's going to be even less noticeable. So if you want bass and treble controls, which are actually pretty nice, they're not like massive amounts of bass and treble. I hate when that is a thing. It's just Shelly Labs and looking at you. They need a little more fine control. It's just, it's just a little bit of bass and a little bit of treble. Super nice. Um, I did have a problem with this unit, however, since my initial testing of it was through the Bluetooth input. And I don't know why this is, and I'm going to recheck it when we go to the uh, speaker testing arena. But I had to turn the treble all the way down and the bass all the way up to make it sound even close to normal, which is not normal. So either the Bluetooth is broken or the converter from Bluetooth to analog to run is broken, or it might just be my unit because it was an advanced unit. Uh, I looked at the reviews. I didn't see any like a million one stars because that would definitely be a reason to one star something. If it's sounds like this when it's playing your music, it's like something's wrong. Um, 
on Westworld. Tungsten without the backs because I broke them because I'm an idiot. I am preamping this, by the way. I'm preamping it with the topping A70 Pro because I'm taking 18 decibels off the input. You could run it straight from your DAC, but then you have this volume control then becomes, then everything died. And I'm a little more cautious than that. So I have, you know, I could take down like all uh, 99 decibels. Then I can max this out to not a peep. And then we could slowly raise up the this, the digital. Where are we? 30, 25, 20, 16, 15, 12, 7. Oh, Lord. Now, keep in mind, these are the world's hardest to drive headphones at this point because these are still revision 9 of the gold driver. If you don't see the review of this because you're not a patron, I'm going to do a review of this, but only for patrons until Ryan at Mod House is like, okay, I have more than three available. You can let it out to the world. Do the world's hard. These, this revision is the world's hardest to drive. Next revision will be a little bit easier. But that is insane. If I plugged any of these other headphones in with the amount of power this is throwing out to this headphone, they would immediately uh, be a warranty. Just warranty them. They're dead. They're dead now. Throw them in the, in the river. And the reason I'm showing this amplifier off with these headphones is because when Ryan from Modhouse came here, which you could see in my Meet the Creator video, we were just testing off different amplifiers. And I know that the non-discrete version of the A90, LA90, can't push as well as this. This has higher voltage output for these headphones. This is a clean amplifier. This is so clean. Now we gotta find out how it does on speakers. I gotta rub off all the damn handprints. I'm gonna also... I loved Westworld season one. Why they had to go and ruin everything? Um, so yeah, having this be completely off doesn't affect the pass through to another set of headphones from this amplifier, which by the way, did I mention the bass knob? There's a bass knob, all right? Have you ever in your entire life wanted to see Venus with a little bit of a bass boost? Neither have I. But let's fucking do it. I'm going to go to a song that actually can work before I switch. No. 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 Hell yeah. Boom, boom, boom. <sighs> so now I got this maxed. I control it here because I'm controlling... The signal path is in through those CES and then out through an Amazon Basics and then to this. They actually sell. Remind me to link in the description, Future Zeos, the banana plug to 4 pin XLR. I think that might be on AliExpress. <laughs> okay. These are remarkable for headphones, but how do they do for speakers? Let's find out. Pausing. Well, not pausing. I'm actually muting the DAC over there. And we'll take that out of shuffle since we are featuring a gorilla's background, which I don't know. It's been my thing forever. So let's use that. So back in the Fosse V3, it's been like a week since the last desk review, by the way. I'm sorry for making it take so long. Um, we're here. We're on the 32 volt 5 amp power supply. I've got the big one here so I could throw 48 at it. And um, I brought out a set of speakers that. Well, these are my first speakers. These are the first speakers that I felt like I spent money on. I think I spent $300, $250? Under $300, but they're Emotivas. I don't even know the model number. XRM 6.1? I think I remember the model number. Um, and I don't really like them that much, but they're pretty hard to drive. So let's whip them out. I cleaned them off. I dusted them. They're disgusting. These things were actually the very bottom. If you go back to my old videos in the old apartment, that shelf I had with the, th the tiers of headphones like behind where I reviewed, these were the base. There was this, and then a board, and then another set of speakers, which were the Klipsch RB150Ms, then a board, and then the little Yamos on top. Um, so yeah, no, these speakers, wait, I gotta unmute. Way too bright, holy shit. It's not this thing's fault. <laughs> these sound exactly like I remember them the last I hooked them up. I think they hooked them up in this house. Don't remember where, but I do not like them. But the fact that I'm running them is all I care about. Now, I'm dacking them off a of Sabaj uh, A10D. 
attendee, a chicken tendy over there. Um, just RCA's out. And I have the volume on that down to 90, and I have this maxed out. If I lower this, and we max out the volume there. You got a bit of a, oh, I clicked it off. You got a bit of a taste. That's another, like I guess, issue. If you go to lower it real fast, and you don't know when to stop, you might click it off. But it's not like it's a smart de uh, amp that's going to boot anything. You turn it on, and it's just on in like a second. So... It actually has a pretty linear power, uh, power stroke. I wouldn't say power stroke. It's fine. Volume knob. Like, you get pretty... If you're looking to use this on a desk, which I think a lot of people are, because, I mean, here's the thing. It has no remote control, so you'd have to get a DAC with a remote control to control it if you wanted to use it, say, in your living room. But if you're on your desk, which is... This is a nice... Like, you can go from... That's basically off. Nine o'clock is off. That's noon. Listenable. And then it's loud at three, but it's not maxed out. From three to six, because this volume knob goes all the way pointing straight down. From three to six is where the big power comes in. Now we're running this off the lesser power supply. And it's having not a single problem pushing these. I'm not hearing any distortion. I had some kick-ass loud music on. As much as I could stand sitting in front of these goddamn speakers. They're so kind of nice looking like with the little offset fucking soft dome a uh, soft domain soft that soft domain soft this morning you've got time for a high home. all right so that's maxed out and what do we hear maxed out so this is loud as it goes i'm afraid to let it run i was at 90 on the dac before cook breakfast Yo. Yeah, no i'm glad i didn't this is all right so it's already got too much power only on the 32 5. So what we'll do is, we're going to shut it off. We're going to unplug the power supply. We're going to plug in the power supply that I've built. You can just buy the $50, 48. It's 48.5, I think. I want to see, see, now that we have this, um, 48.5, activate. Now that we have this, I'll actually be able to tell you what kind of draw we're looking at. Also, since we have that DAC, and I know that it was getting pretty fucking painful at 90 out of 100, or 90 out of 99, what I can do is turn this on. Watch nothing happen. My power thing. I just built this wire, so maybe the wire's not doing nice things. I don't blow it up. I did switch to a larger wire. We do have it on. There we go. It was just not making contact. And so what you get when you do makeshift things. So currently drawing one tenth of an amp or 4.8 watts. There's nothing playing. We're paused. I'm gonna unpause it. I'm going to max out the DAC to 99. This is actually a relatively moderate song. And we're gonna just see. All right, that got loud. That one, like, loud. we saw one amp. One. One amp of draw with this. How do, how am I supposed to make this thing need five, five amps of draw? I may have to get off Gorillaz. That's consistently one quarter of an amp at 48 volts. I saw at most 17 watts being drawn into this. This is insanely efficient. The just, and I can tell you right off the bat, it's louder than it was before. So what we'll do is we'll lower this down. I'm going, I'm gonna have to pause the camera because doing this test is guaranteeing to get me like zero money on the on the internet because it's just gonna be like nope you're not gorillas you're fired hold on so what i just did was i turned it from 48 to 32 volt because that'll obviously handle all the voltages i want and it's hard to tell but it these speakers sound a little different on the 48 i'm less perturbed by them <laughs> Could be this song also because I changed songs. All right, let's go back to 48. So voltage set four, eight, enter, boom. Now we're getting the full 48 volt. 
high. There's definitely some change. If you're running, if you're running this for speakers, like big bad speakers, and at the point of loudness, you're gonna want to invest in the power supply. If you're doing headphones, probably not gonna need it. If you're using very efficient speakers, I was considering rolling out one of like the higher towers, which would actually require less power because tower speakers are so efficient because if they move like this much, like your neighbors call the police when the tower speaker does that much. So littler speakers like the RB42s, those need to move like this to make sound happen loudly. God, that was playing just quiet enough that I think it was still coming through. Uh, I hate copyright climbers. It's fine. It's fine. I can listen to to test tones. So yeah, I'm going to say, at least on these speakers right now, it's a perfect amplifier. I'm going to change it up to speakers I actually like. So give me a second. In the boss dough, planet of the eight. I know it seems Wow, what a difference a speaker makes. Those are those micas actually have better low end reproduction than these giant fucks. Um and they sound perfect. Obviously I put back the same song, so it would seem like a cool transition. Was it a cool transition? You're welcome. Um we were also maxed out 48 volt. 95 out of 99 on that. If I go to full, I like it. full package, more stacking, hanging the full. Welcome to the world of the plastic. Welcome to the world of the Mica RB42. Apparently, they need all the power. So, keep in mind, this is only 300 watts per channel if you're going to four ohms. Very, very, very few speakers are four ohms. I don't know if I have any. I think the boot car, the original boot cards might be six. And these are all self powered, self powered, self powered. Towers are efficient, 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 efficient. I really need some shitty speakers that are hard to drive. I mean, my car RB42s are pretty much the benchmark for a speaker that needs power. But I mean, I feel like there's something out there that's just going to be like, just terrible. The HE6 of, head, of speakers that everyone still accepts but isn't in love with. These I'm in love with. So let's see, let's go out of this. I'm gonna put back on shuffle. We'll see what else we can get. So the gorillas don't personally come and beat me up. Well, that would be kind of cool. I'd like to see you guys. No idea what this is. Oh my God. Just the depth on that. So here's the thing. What I'm assessing here is a speaker that I know and if you don't think I know the Mike RB42, then you don't know that I know that I, that I know. It's even at the right exact height. It's literally eye level horizontal is how I run these. And I can just tell you, there is no detriment to using this versus any other amplifier, including something like the Stark Rimson Monos. I'd have to whip out the Stark Rimson Monos at current configuration is $1,900 for the pair. I think this Texas Instrument chip is going to change a lot of things. In fact, Texas Instrument, hello, if you're hearing this, which you're not, because they don't give a shit, see surround receivers? They all suck. Put your shit in that shit. Because if this can be $89 and the, 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 the Ayayama can be $60, that means the chip itself can't cost more than like $5 to buy. Eight? Twenty? Twenty bucks. And even if it only does two channel or four channel, I think it's actually scheduled to do more than that. Show a bunch of them in a fucking receiver and give me the THD that I need to be happy. Because receivers, even the cheap ones, well, especially the cheap ones, but even the, the mid grade that's a $1,000 receiver. I guarantee you the amplification in it isn't as good as this. That's the saddest thing on earth. The amplification, the DAC, even if I go to the acceptance of level of like, okay, I believe the DAC is fine, I know the amplifiers aren't fun, and they could be. They could measure THD in the thousandths of a percent if they use the text instrument chip that this has. Uh, well, this is tape five uh, on the run. I think it's on the run from tape five. It's very, this is the hardest background I've ever had to read text around, by the way. Yeah, we're maxed. We're maxed and maxed, so if you're looking to push RB42s, <laughs> this is your best option, $100. Any more than this, and I think they'd probably... Yeah, we, we are... I did that visual reference when I did the... Uh, 
So it's like... Again, I'm not hearing any amplifier distortion. We've maxed out a DAC, we've maxed out that amp. I'm on the 48 volt power supply. We are using, hold on. I saw it flash two amps. So most it needs is a three amp 48 volt. They sell a five amp 48 volt, plenty of headroom. I don't even know how you draw that much out of it. These are so hard and maxed out on everything. And you know, how do they do that? The, oh, this is epic score, I can play the whole thing. Ah, oh, good. It's nice to have something that's copyright free. I'm gonna actually lower that a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned not for the amplification, I'm concerned for the drivers in this might fly out. And I love this set of speakers. Don't you fuck with my set of speakers. I could hear the port just going, ah, in the back. The only thing I could do to improve RB42s is to take away the port. Take away the port, make it a passive radiator in the back. And then it'd just be like the end of day. So I don't know how they'd fit it. Although, you know what? That would be a cool little side project. Get another set of RB42s, then draw a massive hole in the back of one instead of the port, and then mount it, and then start doing weight changes to make it a balance. Or power it as well and have it just fucking, fucking fire in all the directions. Yeah, no, this amplifier is perfect. The Aya Yamaya has worse build quality, but I think is based on the same thing. Also, isn't available with a 48 volt power supply. But I think if you bought the Aya Yamaya A07 and bought the same power supply for this amplifier, so long as the plugs work, because I have a. Let me shut this off. This is like the standard everything uses 5.5 millimeter thing, and I have to put an adapter on it because it looks very similar. It's a little bit bigger with a bigger hole. And that's what this actually takes. It needs that bigger hole. Actually, let's go back to this. I won't try to fake it with the um, the big power supply. Right, turn that all the way up or max that out. What's our volume here? 94. Oh yeah. I don't have the go. That's maxed. That's maxed. Oh, I could feel it. It wants to, this is why they sell it. They couldn't, it's a $50 add on power supply, which means it cost them $19, but they didn't want to make the price of this 120 or 110. They wanted to give it to you with the 32 is probably good enough for most. You want the 48. If you're doing speakers straight up, hard to drive, get the 48. Didn't notice a huge difference on these. Apparently much more efficient than I thought they were. These, sad, sad, sad speakers now. I mean, they're trying. The fuck is this? Dead Mouse. Music from the Netflix film, Polar? Main? What the fuck? This is this the main title from the Netflix film, Polar, I guess. That is violent. Let's run a test. Let's turn that off. Scoozy. Let's plug you back in. Make sure you actually turn it on. I'm maxing it out, but I'm going to lower it because I feel like this is specifically to damage speakers. I don't even think that's going to come across on YouTube as music. Taking it to 85. Yeah, if the YouTube filters pick up on that as music, then uh, let's fuck say. I feel like I need to use that in the headphone sound demos. That's bizarre. It's not even making bass because I think they're out of phase with each other. And I could tell you right off the bat, going to 48 volts, there's less noise coming out of it. That's the thing, like, oh, 
which is less noise means it's not making as much sound. No, 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 no. The 48 volt is allowing it to control the speaker to the point where it's not flapping around like, look at this. So yeah, 48 volt, uh, I'm at 93 by the way. That is as the artist intended, I presume. So yes. Do I love the Fosse V3? Yes. Did I bring the other boy out here too? Give me a second. I did bad. Zeos did bad. Uh, I went to turn the knob on that same exact song up and it was the bass one. I thought it was a treble one. It's treble then bass. It's usually bass then treble. And I heard it go clip. I don't know if I crashed the, the, the surround or something, but bad noise come out of that. Either way, same same control, 48 volt. This will handle 24 to 48. That'll handle 24 to 48. Come on. Now that's music. If you don't know, that's from Christine. It's a great movie. You should watch it. Um, so yeah, Th these apparently have the same insides. I'm considering these are the most inefficient speakers. This is going to be the hard to tell, but... Now I can hear it. I'm going to put the camera right up against it. Listen. It, it, it's literally... It's a, God, my hair! Oh, God, this is why I don't want to show my face. Because God knows what the camera's been doing to my hair. God, I'm just quitting. Quitting YouTube. It's over. Game over. Um, so yeah, if you have hard to drive speakers, you will not hear the Bluetooth ticking, which by the way, slight annoyance. I sat down, I plugged it all in. I flipped the switch. It was red, which means line in and it was blue. Fuck. I had to get my phone and disable my Bluetooth because it automatically connects. That's another, if you get this one, you have to know as soon as you walk, it's, it's actually could be great. Because if you leave this on, like in your den or kitchen or anything, and you go out to work and you're working and you and you come home, as soon as your phone enters the Bluetooth area, whatever this was playing in line in, fuck that. Phone now. So you might want that. But yeah, let's lower this volume. Let's temper that volume. We'll max that out again. We'll, we'll change tracks. This needs more bass. Or less bass. Or more treble. All treble, no bass. Oh man, these are dangerous controls. With that on 48 volt, these are dangerous controls because touching bass and treble, and then all of a sudden where your volume was, isn't anymore because if you go too far, it's, you can hear the port screaming. So yeah, I'd honestly consider the BT-20A Pro um, for the tone controls. A slightly annoying Bluetooth and tone controls. Plus, the volume knob isn't the on-off. You have an actual switch. But yeah, either one of these. I understand why the V3 is so popular. I feel like they should sell as many of these. Because it's the same spec, the same power. You just get the option of Bluetooth, which... Get yourself an Alexa. Get yourself an Alexa and tell it to pair with this. This will never let it go because it's constantly trying to touch it. And then just hook up a set of speakers that you buy at a yard sale or something. You set your bass and treble control. You set your volume here manually. You tell that thing to be on volume five and you just rock the house. Oh, I have it off. I should probably turn it on. It also does not get One hot. Just sit on your lazy butt and watch all the TV you ever want. Ah, Weird Al. Love you, Weird Al. You know, this is just as... As far as I can tell from the f six minutes, three minutes without the camera on and fucking five minutes now, so eight minutes total, this is the same exact quality as the Fosse V3. It's the same spec. It's the same chip. They just shoved a little more stuff in it and cost $10 more. The only thing I would be concerned with is if the tone controls are digital, then it's... Do I doubt... But it might be doing digital. You know what? I haven't researched the, te the Texas Instrument chip enough that might have built-in tone controls. That's how those chips work. They're like, it's a power chip, but also it handle this and this and DSP correction and this and this and this. So, yeah. Big fucking thumbs up. Fosse Audio. Whether you're looking at the V3 or you're looking at the BT-20 Pro, fucking... Easy buy. Best amplifiers I've heard in years. If we're talking price to performance, years.
Like, this is the new revolution stuff. I want to thank Periapt, by the way, for giving me these cables. These are some very, very, very nice. I think Magomi's making their internals. So yeah, you got that. It's a little light, so it kind of does, it does, it does wheelies a little bit. I don't recommend this whole setup on the, the stand. Um, Patreon subscribe stars support this channel. People will be able to see these reviews early. Participate in yard sales from the 1st to the 10th of every month, and I ship anywhere in the world for half shipping and content in the United States and Canada for free shipping. And then you get to the losses sound demos. I should re-sound demo these stupid things because I hate them. And then those because I love them. And then I have to do the fluids because they're insane. But those are self-powered. So you don't, you don't get to work with a self-powered. Um, you know where this amp's going? This amp and that amp. The V3 and this and the Ayayami are going into my garage. Because guess what amplifiers I'm going to use to power those massive JBL speakers that I have. Well, these, but I need more more 48. Actually, they're so efficient. They're drawing so little. I'm wondering if I could use that and just take the... Because that has 12 amps capability. If I split the power three ways. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun here on Z Reviews. Thank you. Subscribe, goddammit. 40% of my viewers aren't subscribed, and I hate saying that stupid... Oh, don't forget to favorite and... Remember when you used to be able to like, favorite, and subscribe? What's a favorite anymore? They don't even have that shit. Get out of my face.